Okay, we've been reading the book of Habakkuk, verse by verse. At first he started bad, complaining, thinking God wasn't with him. I guess he forgot the verse that uh, God would never leave us. He will never leave us. How many of us have accepted that verse? Because if you really have accepted it, that he's never leave us, that means you're going to walk in the spirit. Because if you don't think he's with you, and then you're not going to walk in the spirit. You understand what I'm saying? But if you believe he never leaves us, then you know he's right there. You might be by yourself, but you got eyes on you. And that's the Lord. Amen. Don't think you're by yourself. We're never by ourselves. Now we're going we're gonna to read Psalm 73, verses 1 through 28. It's going to be quick. But like I said last week, this is going to show... Habakkuk is going to kind of talk about the same thing, but around verse 7, I believe, somewhere around there, or 17. But we're going to see that he starts seeing it in the Spirit. He starts receiving what God has said in the Spirit. Amen? Amen. Now, this is going to be quick and short, but it's very true and very powerful. We have to believe this. Psalm 73, verse 1. Truly God is good to Israel, even to such as are a clean heart. The hearts that are pure in the Lord, he says, God is good. So if we say God is good, then that's in the spirit. God is good. We're of a clean heart, but then we're going to see the next verse. That's not him. This is this verse one should be the last ver verse. We'll see that when we get to the bottom. But as for me, but as for me up here, yeah, God is good. And we can say it with a clean heart. But as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped now this is some of us okay who who it is i don't know but some of us have been this way for i was envious at the foolish when i saw the prosperity of the wicked remember that's what Habakkuk how, how was everything we just read and learned from this teaching we get so upset when we see the wicked prosper better than us we get upset about it but that's when we're in the flesh. Okay? That's us in the flesh. People having everything and getting away with murder, cheating on their taxes, whatever. Fight, and we're fighting to pay our bills. Lord, where are you at? I mean, really, I'm living for you, but he's the one that's living like a king. We think that way. For there are no bands in their death, but their strength is firm. They don't seem to have suffering in their life. That's what it's saying. They're dead in their sleep with no parole. No worries. Because they have so much. And they look like they're strong. They look like they're strong. Now, these are men, these are people without the Lord. But this is the way they appear to us. They are not in trouble as other men, neither are they plagued like other men. They get away with everything, like cheating, like I said, like cheating, breaking the law. We do things, <laughs> we get caught. I know, I see people running red lights all the time, and as soon as I run a red light, I'm going to get a ticket. They don't worry about anything. We worry about everything. Shouldn't it be the other way around? Right? Amen? Amen? Shouldn't it be the other way around? We're the ones who shouldn't worry about nothing. Why? First, because God told us to. Amen? Amen. But they're the ones out there, oh, they're not worried about a thing because, you know, because they don't know the spiritual life that we're in. That there's a God and there's a devil. They don't see that. 
what they see is themselves doing pretty good, having no problems, worrying about nothing. Verse 6, therefore pride compasses them about as a chain. Violence covers them as a garment. They just live in pride because of how they have cheated to get away, to get where they're at. They just, that's just the way they live. For that, for them, that is normal. That is normal for them. They hold their neck up high like there's a chain. Not a, what do you call it, noose? <laughs> but they hold their neck on high. And injustice and cruelty seems to be their clothing, their garments. That's the way they live, right? That's the way the lost people live. Seven, verse seven, their eyes stand out with fatness. They have more than heart could wish. They have more than heart could, heart could wish. They have the eyes of arrogance. That's what they're saying here. Their eyes out of with fatness, showing that they have any, they don't have anything. They don't need anything. They have everything they want. They walk around with pride. Their eyes out with fatness. They're just, you know, you have people that way. Rich people who walk around with their nose up in the air, and this is what he's speaking about. That's the way they are. Verse eight, they are corrupt and speak. Wicked, wickedly concerning oppression, they speak lawfully. They're so wicked, they tell people how proud they are for taking advantage of someone or people. They, they, they're proud of it. So, uh, <laughs> oh, excuse me. Verse 9, they set their mouth against the heavens and their tongue walketh through the earth. They say things like, there is no God. This is what they say. They curse him and they say they don't need him. They, I don't need the Lord. You know how many people are that way? Especially rich people. Or people who are just arrogant. Think they're somebody. I don't need the Lord. They walk in the streets parading themselves with their arrogancy. Like, like they're somebody. You know, you got a lot of people that walk that way. They're, they're like, their poop don't stink. But guess what? They do stink because they're dead. They don't have the, the Holy Spirit in them. And if you don't have the Holy Spirit in you, if you haven't received the Lord Jesus Christ, you're dead. And do dead people stink? Yes, they do. It might not be like a physical stink of a real person dead, but they're walking around and they stink. And true born-again Christians can smell them. Verse 10, Therefore his people return hither, and waters are full cup, or wung out to them. God's people come before them because they have been thinking about it over and over again. They get more confused and they don't understand. Now, this is Christians. This is Christians. We think we need to be like the world if we want to have stuff. Get out of the flesh. Get out of the flesh. That's all he says. Get out of the flesh. If the, if the Lord wants you to have plenty, he will give you plenty. Right. Or he might just give you what you need. Okay? But whatever it is, the Lord says what? Be content. Be content with it. Be happy. Because he's given us more than what we, what we deserve, right? He's given us life. Amen. Amen? We can't ask for much more than that. So everything else, oh, well, if I have it, good. If I don't have it, that's good because I got life now. I'm alive now in the Lord Jesus Christ. And when I die, I'm going to heaven. Amen. Verse 11, they say, how doeth God know? And is there knowledge in the most high? How does God know what I do? That's what lost people say. And some Christians might think, might think the same thing. Oh, God doesn't see me. Yes, he does. He's with us 24-7. 24-7. He doesn't take a break. He doesn't sleep. He's with us 
So when you're out there and you don't see no Christians around and you think you're going to joke around with this lost person and might tell dirty jokes or talk about women in an ugly way, uh, you know, God's right there. If you're a born-again Christian, God, God is right there and he hears every word you say. Lost people say, when you tell them about their sins, <laughs> they don't have no, they don't believe in sin. They don't believe, I, I, <laughs> I was backslidden, it's been a long time ago, okay, but I was backslidden, I was with a girl, and she was ready to hit the sack, and I Right before it was going to happen, I stopped and I thought, no, no, this is wrong. You know, even though I'm backslidden, I'm not still not supposed to do this. And I told her, oh, I can't do this. And she's like, well, what's wrong? I said, well, I'm a Christian man. I said, I'm not walking with the Lord right now, but I am a Christian man and, and this is sin. And she looked at me, well, seriously, she looked at me like, really? This is sin? I mean, she was serious. She did not know that sex before marriage was sin. I can honestly say that because it happened. And so if she was that way, there's others that are that way. They don't, homosexuality on TV, there's nothing wrong with it. It's sin. See how uh, daytime, daytime, daytime shows on TV, they got lesbians together. They got gays together. They're starting to say curse words. Cursing is not a cur cursing anymore. And they're, they're like, is there really a God? They will find out one day. They will find out. And what's the Bible say? What's our Lord say? Every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess. Because once they hear that, once they see it, it's going to be too late for them. They'll see it. But it's too late. Because when they go before the white throne judgment, they're going to see God. And yes, he was for real. Verse 12, Behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. Oh, how true that is, right? How true. They say these wicked people are just getting more and more and enjoying the easy life. When I watch TV sometimes, uh, I see people who are making tons of money for singing, for singing, not praise songs, for singing junk, and they're making tons of money, right? <sighs> but it's in those worlds. What they're enjoying right now is of the world. What we're enjoying right now is the Spirit walking in us. The Spirit leading us and guiding us on how to live. I thought I was having fun when I was lost. Huh. I'm staying right where I'm at because I enjoy the life I'm living now. Amen? Amen. Now the next verse is one that many of us say, okay? Verse 13, Verily I have cleansed my heart in vain and washed my hands in innocency. In 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 Did I do all this for nothing? Am I living for the Lord for nothing? When I see lost, wicked people just having the time of their life, having whatever they want, I mean, Really? Am I in the right place? We start questioning it. We do. But this teaching has shown us, no, no, stop it. Stop it. Because the Lord's showing these people are going to pay for it. Oh, if you want to live that way, well, like I said, the wrath of God is going to come upon you. And I'm not talking about hell. But his wrath will come. His chastisement on us will come. Okay? Verse 14. For all the day long have I been plagued and 
chasten every morning. These things that make us worry. Those are plagues. The Lord says, hey, why are you going through that every morning? We do it from the sun up to sun down. Well, what are we going to do here? Or what are we going to do about that? Or, you know, whatever it is, we worry about things all day. And we had a teaching on that. The Lord said not to worry. But we don't seem to understand that. We don't seem to understand the words not to worry. When God told us that. So what do we do? We're being disobedient when we're worrying about whatever. Know this. Know this. God has everything under control. There's nothing that God is not able to control. He's in control of every he's in control of every part of our life. Every part of it. So if we worry, we're sinning. I hope y'all got that. If we're worrying about whatever, I mean whatever, we're sinning. Verse 15. If I say I will speak thus, behold, I should offend against the generation of thy children. The Lord's saying, if we let these these worries get to our heart, it shows us, it shows weakness in us. And then what happens? Our young ones see it. Our young ones see it. And and that's what we're teaching them. They can learn good from us or they can learn bad from us. But this is what happens. They, They will learn how to be confused about things. When they see you confused, not knowing what to do, are you listening? Your children will follow you. Train them in the way they should go. Well, what kind of training are you doing? Are you training them in, as walking in the Lord? Are you training them like the devil wants us to be? The devil wants us to be worried, confused. That's what the devil wants. And is that what we're going to teach our children? Because they will see it in us. Believe me, kids learn by watching Verse 16, when I thought to know this, it was too painful for me. When we try to get a perspective of it, it begins to hurt more. Knowing, I'm talking about our children, the way we walk, starts to hurt because we're not being a good witness to them, to our children. And it could be friends and and family, whatever, but here I'm talking about children. It's just like my five-year-old daughter meant to be with the Lord. I didn't understand. And it didn't ease the hurt. But others saw me. This was not my children because that was my only child. But other people saw me. What did they see? They seen the Lord working in my life. That's what they saw. Because I didn't turn and curse God. I didn't get mad at God. I kept praising him. I kept going to church, and he was still my God. Amen. Even though he took my little girl, he was still my God. Because he tells us in the word, it rains on the just and the unjust, right? So whatever happens to the lost people, that's going to happen to us also. But we have the Lord to lean on. We have the Lord to carry us through that time. Amen. Amen. Now, this is where he starts to be spiritual about what's going on. Verse 17. Until I went into the sanctuary of God, then understood I therein. Then he understood. After all this, he's finally going to understand and see where God's coming from. This is a big word. Until I got with the Lord. So in, as these worries that we have, until we get with the Lord, We're not going to understand them, and they're going to stay on us. But when we get with the Lord, until he got with the Lord in the sanctuary, in his church, his sanctuary, it could be a church. Sanctuary could be anywhere. Sanctuary doesn't necessarily mean a church, okay? Because a church ain't a building, right? Right. So when he got into his sanctuary, his place with the Lord 
They need started to understand. Amen? Amen. We, if you don't have a secret place, a place where just you and the Lord meet, get one. Get one. It'll help. It helps me all the time. I have a little closet in there. I have my pillow that I kneel on, and it's just me and the Lord. Amen? Oh, God. If y'all don't have it, do it. Really, seriously, do it, because you'll come out of there feeling oh, so refreshed, so relaxed. Amen? Amen? We need to set that time aside for prayer and worship. I mean, when we're praying, we should be worshiping. Because prayer, like I said, uh, Jesus told his disciples to wait for him and to pray while he went to go speak to his father, right? The night before his crucifixion, he said, wait for me. So he went back, and he, they were all asleep. And Jesus said, hey, you can pray for one hour? For one hour? That's what Jesus told them. You couldn't pray for one hour? How many of us pray over an hour? Don't raise your hands. If we don't, learn how. Learn how, because I've had a teaching on that. The Our Father, right there by itself, Our Father. Talk, talk, talk about Our Father, which art in heaven. And then talk about how he's in heaven, but yet he's down here with us. I mean, all, just every little statement in there, you can pray on that for 30, 40 minutes at least. So you can pray to the Lord for over an hour, especially when you're in the Spirit. It's easy because you're just thanking Him for everything. I mean, and then plus you're, you're praying for this person and lifting them up, and then you pray for this person, what they need, and this person. We have a lot of people we can pray for. So when you're praying to the Lord, this 15 minutes, maybe average 15 minutes, the Lord got on the disciples because okay, they couldn't pray for an hour. Then he says, I understood what was going to happen in the end. And the Lord helped them to understand. Amen. Amen. Verse 18, surely thou didst set them in slippery places. Talking about the lost people. Thou casteth them down into destruction. The Lord is guiding them to a slippery road. They're on a slippery road. But they think it's a good road. Lost people think they're living a good life. But they have a downfall coming. They are going to have a downfall unless they accept the Lord. That sleeper road is going to be where they fall. Verse 19. How are they brought into desolation as in a moment they are utterly consumed with terrors? <coughs> when it does happen, it's going to happen instantly. That's what the Lord has said. It's going to happen instantly. And they will be destroyed. We're talking about lost people. How many of us in here, again, and I, you might get tired of hearing, hearing me say this, but I'm going to say it. How many of us want to see our family, our friends get destroyed? How many of us want that? Don't raise your hands, but how, you're answering your question if you're not witnessing to them. If you're not witnessing to them, then you, all have, then you don't have no problem seeing them being destroyed. Y'all hear me? I'm coming with the truth here. If you don't witness the family or friends, you don't care if they're going to be destroyed. And don't say you do. Because if you did, you tell them about Jesus. Just like the song, he sent us out there. For what? We're the light. And we're supposed to witness to him. Amen? Amen. And this is the word of God, you guys. This is the words of God. If you're out in that world, in that wicked world, and you're ashamed of God, well, guess what? He's going to be ashamed of you. That's what he said, right? Verse 19. How are they brought into desolation as in a moment they utter consumed with their oh, I already said that. <laughs> One minute they're booming with pleasure, fun, money. The next minute they're totally it totally crashes on them, and they're destroyed. These Look at these people that are out there, rich, living in pleasure, doing whatever they want to do. Do you think that's going to last forever? No. no. We're going to last forever. 
who we are. And if we're poor, that's fine with me. I used to be poor. And that was fine with me. I was still happy with the Lord. So whether I have or don't have, I know the end. I'm going to live in a mansion. Amen? This is only temporary. But forever, forever. I mean, the mansion is good, but what's better than that? I'm going to be living with Jesus. Amen? There's nothing better than that. They've gone from being, having a joyful, happy life. Like they're set forever. Little do they know, that is not going to be forever. They're going to, they're going to feel that terror come upon them. They're going to feel it. They're going to see it and feel it. Those of us who totally trust in, in the Lord, we have no terror. The Lord said that's for the lost people. We who live for the Lord and totally, totally trust him, we don't have to fear. Amen. Amen. We don't have to fear. Verse 20, as a dream when one awaketh, so, O Lord, when thou awakest, thou shalt despise their image. The lost are going to wake up one day and realize that all their prosperity, all their enjoyment of life is over with. Yeah. And it's going to be like a dream. You know, dreams are quick. All of a sudden you're awake. But that's what it's going to be like, the Lord says. When they wake up, it's going to be over with. And they're going to find themselves in a burning fire that never goes out. Just for that little temporary moment in life where they did what they wanted to do. Verse 21. Thus my heart was grieved and I was pricked in my vein, ruins. We start to realize that when we're wrong for being in such anger to the Lord, we get angry at the Lord. Lord, I mean, really, why? Blah, blah, blah. We're going we're gonna to see on the day of the judgment seat where the Christians will be. <laughs> That's when we're going to get our, our glory. Let me say that. Our glory to live with, with. Right now we have Jesus in us and he lives with us. But then we're going to live with him and we will see God face to face. Right now we can't. But there is going to be a time, because Jesus is God, right? So I can say Jesus or God. But there's going to be a time we will see him face to face. Oh, what a glorious day that will be. Verse 22, so foolish was I and ignorant. I was as a beast, beast before thee. He's saying we acted like animals. We acted like animals that were on a rampage of getting their food. A tiger getting their deer or whatever that's what we act like how dumb we are for thinking and feeling that way that the Lord doesn't care about us y'all hear me because that's the way Habakkuk was right we should know our father we, sh we should know our father well those who walk with the Lord those who read the Bible we know our father so we shouldn't act this way he is our God. And if we believe in our God and what we know of him, we know he's going to take care of us. He's going to give us all our need. He's going to be our protector, and he'll never leave us. Amen? Amen. <laughs> he takes care of everything. We're in his hands. We're not in our hands. We're in his hands. <laughs> Verse 23, Nevertheless, I am continually with thee. Thou hast holding me by my right hand. Even though we were like this, we need to remember Hebrews, I must go, well, the verses, Hebrews 13, 5. I will never leave thee or forsake thee. I'm always holding your hand. Amen. Right? Amen. I mean, really. 
I would have to say the majority of Christians don't know how to receive this verse. They don't know that God is holding their hands all the time. All the time. Just like he did with Peter. Matthew 14, 31. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? When Peter wanted to walk on the water, Jesus stretched out his hand. Peter started to sink. What did Jesus do? I got you. Amen. Amen. That's how he is with us. We need to believe that. We need to believe that. Verse 24, Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel, and afterwards receive me to glory. <laughs> Amen. 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 We need to do that. What he shows and directs us to do. Psalms 1, verse 1 and 2. I mean, I've, I've said this many times, but I'm going to say it again. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. I've said it before, and I'll say it again, I'll say it again, I'll say it again. If you're watching Dr. Phil for counsel, you're sinning. He gives no godly counsel. He is ungodly counsel. If you watch him, you see, I listen to him because I want to learn. I listen to him, and it's hard for me to listen to him because I want to throw up. But he never refers to the Lord. He never refers to scriptures. And a man who's counseling and doesn't do that is ungodly counsel. Remember that. And then he says, nor standeth in the way of the sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. We shouldn't be doing none of this. But his delight, our delight, listen, our delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doeth he meditate day and night. Like I told you all before, day and night. Also in Psalms 32, 8, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with my eye. Amen. <laughs> Come on, you guys. What else could we ask for? Not only does he save us, but then he guides us. God is too good to us. Man, isn't he? We don't deserve that. But his love is so great. That's why it's called an agape love. Because it's hard to love like God loves. His agape love, love your enemies. That's hard. We were his enemies. We spit on him. We tortured him. And he loved us. He showed us how to love our enemies. He loved his enemies so much when they were lost, he died for them on the cross. I hope y'all are hearing that. Right. Love your enemies. Well, he showed us how to love. He gave his life for his enemies. And at one time, we all were his enemy. Right. Now, just like Habakkuk and the psalmist and us also, we seem to have doubt sometimes On some things. But we need to remember. We need to remember. We win at the end people. We might lose some battles. But we're not going to lose the war. We will win. So when you're thinking. God's not there. Or he don't care. He does care. And he does love us. And he's going to bring us to victory. He's bringing us to victory now. That's why he gave us the Holy Spirit, right? <laughs> we win. We win. We win. If you get excited because you're a baseball team or your football team or your soccer team, you get excited when they win at the end. That's nothing. That's nothing. Nothing. And we get all excited and crazy. This is the big win right here. This is the big win. Amen. Verse 25, 25, whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon the earth that I desire besides thee. Amen. Amen. There is only one in heaven. That's the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God Almighty. And he's the one we call on, right? When we're in trouble, we call on the Lord. There is no other. Right here you think? There is no other. No saints, and there is no Mary. 
So if anybody out there is praying to Mary, vain words. Because right here it says God is the only one. Amen? Amen. He is the only one. They are in heaven, Mary. You know, she's in heaven, but she's not God. And they're not to be prayed to. Because when the Lord says, there's only one you pray to, that leaves everybody else out, right? Leaves everybody else out. Should we have any one, anything that we are more loyal to besides the Lord God? That's what it's saying. Should we have anything that's more loyal than our Lord? Some people do. Some people do. Some people have more loyalty in their preacher, or should I say priest. They have more loyalty to the priest than they do the word of God. They've been shown, and I've, I've witnessed to, to Catholics, I have shown them the scriptures, not my opinion. No, I've read the scriptures to them, and they believe it. They even say, I, I, I believe it, but they put a but in there. Are there more, or you got people who are more uh, loyal to their religion? Catholic, Baptist, Pentecost, they're more loyal to their religion than they are the Word of God. We got a lot of people like that. And believe it or not, this also includes parents. That's why the Lord said that we need to hate our parents. And he didn't mean hate them. What he was saying, we love him so much, it seems like we hate our parents. That's how, my, how far apart they are. Our love for him should be so great, it seems like we hate everybody else. It seems like. You know, the Bible, I mean, the Lord said, hate your parents. You read that and you're not a Christian. And you're like, what? <laughs> but this is what he's talking about, Okay. Your child, your children, same thing. Not just your parents, but your children. There are parents who put their children before the Lord. Verse 26. My flesh and my heart faileth, but God is the strength of my heart. But God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Amen. God. Uh, our flesh sometimes believes that a person can make us happy. We believe that sometimes. Whoever that person is, we believe it. They're going to fail you. If Jody is looking to me for happiness, I'm going to fail her. If I'm looking to her for happiness, she's going to fail me. People, no matter how much you love them, will fail you. Remember that. The Lord God, the Lord Jesus, will never fail us. Just like we sing. Amen. He will never fail us. So if your eyes are on him for glory and happiness and joy, he will never fail us. Amen? Amen. Being in, in the flesh, it's natural to believe that, we, that money will make us happy. It's true. Not only for the lost people, but Christians think the same way. Oh, if I had some more, if I had more money, the Lord said. Did, did the Lord say we have to put money away for tomorrow? Did He say that, or did He tell us not to worry about tomorrow? Don't. In fact, don't worry about tomorrow. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That's what the Lord said. And he will take care of tomorrow. I believe that. I believe that my faith is in that. I'm not worried about tomorrow. I'm not. If it's good, amen. If it's bad, amen. Because whatever, listen to me, the Bible says it. The Lord said, Whatever comes our way, whatever comes our way, he's allowing it to happen because he knows we can handle it. He said, I'm not going to give you more than you can handle. 
So whatever happens to us, whatever, the Lord knows we can handle it. So why are we going to worry? In fact, that's in Matthew chapter 6, verses 31 through 34. So if you're putting money away for tomorrow, then who are you depending on? You or the Lord? See, right? It's pretty simple. If you're putting away money for tomorrow, then you're taking care of yourself. I forgot what verse it is, but the Lord gives us money today so we can use it today. Just like the, guy, the, guy, the three guys he gave the money to. The first two used it. He gave it to them and they used it. The third guy, he put it up, put it in savings. Was he pleased with that man? No, he was displeased with him. So what the Lord gives us today, we're supposed to use it. You tell me not to worry, but I do. Instead of trusting in you. That's what a lot of people say. That's why I have a teaching coming up. It's on authority. It's on believing. Believing what he says. Take authority over it. But that's another teaching. This is what we need to depend on. The Lord said, "We, when we are weak, he is strong. Yeah. Amen. Amen. When I am weak, he's strong. Do I have anything to worry about? <laughs> and when he says, what is our portion? The Lord, the Lord, forever. He's our portion forever. <laughs> Lamentations 3.24. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. All our hope is in him. Because he is our portion of our salvation. He is our portion. We want to be like Adam. Because that one time before they sinned, Adam spoke to the Lord God face to face. Because there was no sin. So he was able to speak to the Lord face to face. And he wasn't afraid. Galatians 1.12, giving thanks unto the Father which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. <laughs> we don't care if he gives us nothing, but our inheritance is going to be him. Amen? Amen? That's going to be our inheritance. That's all we need. Uh, now, now, let's go back to verse uh well, not one yet. Let's go to Habakkuk 3, verses 17 and 18. Even though the fig tree have no blossoms, no grapes on the vines, even though the olive crops fail, the fields are empty and barren, even though the flocks die in the field and the cattle barns are empty, verse 18. This Verse 17 is saying, even though I don't have nothing, that's what verse 17 is saying, even though I have nothing, verse 18 Habakkuk said, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. Amen? Amen. Even though all this, especially Job, all his family, all his servants, all his uh, uh, crop, his cattle, everything was taken from him. But he never turned away from the Lord. And just like Habakkuk, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. Sometimes I'm going to say raise your hands, but I'm not. How many of us can say that in here? I'll, you know, I'll raise my hand, but don't, you don't have to raise your hand. Because if you're going to be truthful, uh, some of us might not be able to raise our hand. But Habakkuk said, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in the God of my salvation. I will be joyful. I will full, be full of joy because I'm saved. I'm born again. Amen? What we want overall is the Lord. Amen? Now listen to me, believe it or not, there are people who don't like you because 
we live this way. Y'all hear me? Well, his child was taking a look at him. He's not even cursing God. Or he's not down in the Lord. He's they can't believe, they don't know how we do it, and they don't like us for doing it. Y'all hear me? But your love for Jesus, with all your heart, we're just doing the same what he did. He loved us so much, what did he do? He gave his life for us. That's loving somebody with all your heart. So you love the Lord with all your heart, guess what? You're going to do the same thing. You're going to die to self. And put the Lord there. Amen? Amen. Verse 27. For lo, they are far from thee shall perish. Thou hast destroyed all them that go whoring from thee. The word shall means that those who have rejected him will be destroyed. Damn forever. That's what it says. Them that, that, that go whoring means... What it says in Revelation chapter 2, verse 22. Therefore I will throw her on a bed of suffering, and those who commit adultery with her will suffer greatly unless they repent and turn away from, their, from her evil deeds. This is talking about uh, the whore of Babylon. It also means those who follow their false gods and idols. going to be destroyed. They're going to be damned forever. God's supposed to be first, right? right? In everything. Now, ask yourself, ask yourself, am I putting God before everybody and everything? Ask your own self that. And when you answer it, and the Lord knows your heart, so he already knows, be truthful. And if you are putting anybody or anything before the Lord, praise God, all we have to do is repent. Mean it, but repent and say, forgive me, Father. I really didn't realize I was doing that. But now he's shown us, right? And he's so good, he's, he's going to say, I forgive you. If you're coming from your heart with repentance, he will forgive us. Amen. Amen. Verse, but is... But it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all thy works. We can declare all his works. Yes, God is good because he did this for me. He's done this for me. He blessed me here. He blessed me there. We declare all, all he's done for us. We can do that. We testify of everything he's done. How good, how awesome. To receive the Lord Jesus in our heart. That's what we testify. Just like the song. He is my testimony. What it's saying is. This is everything the Lord has done for me. Now. now, Like I said at the beginning. Psalm 73 1. I said that should have been the last verse. Right. This is when we say. Now we say. Truly God is good to Israel. Truly God is good to us. Even to such as are of clean heart. Only those of us who are, are of a clean heart. Who honestly truly love the Lord. And put him first. God is good. Amen. Amen. Thank you dear Heavenly Father. Thank you for your words. Thank you for this teaching. Because there's a lot in here. I know many of us could learn from. So thank you, Father. You're always showing us the right way, the good way, Lord, to be right with you. So, Father, thank you. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for being in our presence. And thank you for giving us the opportunity to sing praise songs to you. Thank you. Thank you for opening our eyes that we can now live for you and nobody else. Thank you, Lord. Jesus' name, amen. Ay, 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 just pour.